everybody. We're up here in Fairmont, Minnesota. We're going to go out onto Bud Lake and do a little breakdown session of Bud. Uh, stay tuned. I'm going to get out on the lake and I'll show you my graph and where I would start my endeavors. So we're sitting at boat launch right now. Um, kind of taking a look at the lake, seeing where everyone's at. Looking at the lake on my graph. <laughs> well, you guys will have to get a pen and paper down. Write down all my all my pins here because you're gonna see it. So here we got Bud Lake. Everyone's been fishing right along here, right along this top side here. Which is smart, you know. Channel up here comes down, you know, water flowage. It's a very good place to start fishing. Normally, that's where I would start any day going after fish. As you look out here, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. There's a lot of shacks up on that north end. Not so many down over here anymore. That north end's pretty packed full. But we're gonna head out here, start breaking some water down. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go away from everybody else and see what we can find out here. Kinda show you guys how we break down some water. See what the fish wanna do. We got our first hole drilled here. Pretty decent odds. We got a nice school here, about 30 foot away from us. So, let's go, that looks like about the middle of them. 30 foot that way, we'll drill another hole. See what we got. see what these fish do and how they react to him drilling a hole and walking on the ice. You can tell a lot about a school of fish just on what they do when you're walking on the ice while you're drilling if you have one of these Garmin live scopes. Another thing, I mean if you don't have a live scope, I'm going to do a video on it one of these days how we used to do it just with flashers. But, uh, you know, find an area, drill out a grid, and then start checking your holes. You know, fish them, you know, one to five minutes each hole. If you don't get any activity, move to the next one. Because that gives your area time to calm down. Not as much noise on top of the ice in that spot. You know, the fish are there for a reason. They want to be there, whether they stay there is up to how much noise pushes them around. You know, it has to do with the weather. Everything that's going on, fishing pressure, stuff like that for whether they're gonna bite really hard, have a finicky bite, if they're gonna stay in the one spot, or if you're gonna have to move around and just chase them all day. But, let's go over there and see what we can figure. Coming in at all? I came in solid and nothing. Solid and nothing. Guessing they're small fish. That one's a little better fish. Small. Yeah. Seventy, sixty, 
270 that way. We check out that school and see if they're any bigger or what we got. Man, you know. Salmo chubby darter. Fish are liking that a lot. But I use it to see, you know, what the fish are doing. You know, if they're real interested. If they're going to be hungry, going to chew. Otherwise, if you don't get much reaction, you know, sometimes it's hard to get them to bite. So you can tell a lot from upsizing your bait. See if they want, if they're interested in something bigger. If they're not, but you can tell like they're excited about it, they look like they want to eat, you know, then you can downsize, you can go from there to figure out what you can get them to bite on. Throw this Northland tackle coffin spoon down. Come on. Get on there. Boy, that wind has got a little bit of bite on it. right here one of my go-to baits that Northland tackle coffin spoon it's got that little flipper at the bottom with the treble hook it <laughs> I use it for everything perfect call bait yellow bass love it Pretty good amount of fish disappear on me just from walking to the camera there. 
see if I can get some to come back. You know, that's one of the biggest things. Oh, here we got one coming in. Ah, oh, popped it right out of his mouth. It's one of the biggest things with these yellow bass. You know, they're, they're constantly moving. You can get it to where, you know, they don't move as much. If you can get them fed, you know, consistent bait in front of them, fish the top of the school, get them riled up, get them going crazy. They'll sit in one spot and you can just pick them off, pick them off, pick them off. Um, you know, if, if nothing's around, I jig aggressive. It's an aggressive fish. But just from walking to the camera, now my school's gone. So that that's one of the things of, you know, drill a good amount of holes, find a school, and then try to not make as much noise as possible, you know. Grab a chair, set your house up right away, you know, give it a little bit of time to settle down. The more, the more you get the fish riled up with walking around and get them moving and moving, the finickier the bite's going to be. They're going to come in, look at you, if they hear anything, they're going to peel off. And just, I mean, we drilled that hole right outside the Can-Am, dropped down, found a school, drilled on them, and then just from walking back to get a couple rods, back over to the hole, they were gone. Then they slowly started trickling back in. They actually went right to the hole that we drilled first. They didn't want to, didn't seem, you know, they didn't want that chubby darter, but they were still active on it. So I know if I put something a little bit smaller down, they probably would have bit, just like these ones. We got out here on another school, and, uh, you know, I had that one bite the chubby darter, and dropped it back down. They didn't seem too, you know, too aggressive about it. Like the other day, it was just one after another on that. So I dropped this coffin spoon down and uh, bam, right away. They, they like flash, they like bigger baits. Don't be afraid to use a bigger bait. I like using a bigger bait. It's easier to see on your electronics. Kind of get it to work better. One of the other biggest things, like, this is the Iconic 41 that I'm using right here. It's got a real soft tip. So you get that, that coffin spoon working on there. You can see that tip. I hope the camera's angled. It's pretty good. But if you can see that tip, you know, working, when something touches that line, it changes just that little bit. And I'm constantly jigging because they're, you know, their bite's so aggressive, but it's so light. Any little change, you know, I'm going to set the hook. Whether there's a fish there or not, nine times out of ten, the fish is going to be there. Sometimes it's not, but there's more of them down there. Hook sets are free. <laughs> well, looks like my school moved. I'm going to do a little bit of recon here. Um, see if I can get back on a school. Actually, I might just, you know, kind of bounce around the lake a little bit more. I know the school over here, you know, they want to eat, so I don't really need to fish them anymore. I got enough fish in the freezer right now, but I just like watching the schools so I know what they're doing, which ones are going to eat, what schools to fish, what schools not to fish. Fish a bigger bait, you can you can tell a lot about a fish just by the bait you're throwing down at them. Oh, the joys. You can get rattling around. I have a bait puck open up in the door pocket. <laughs>
sitting right on this 15 foot brake line here. And uh, we're still kind of on the south end. We're not quite up to the north. More so like centrally located, kind of out from the treatment plant, but a little bit farther south yet. We're uh, gonna see what we can find here. all day. 
today, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go to that spot, I'm gonna drill out a grid, probably 50, 60 holes, and I'm gonna start on the opposite end that I finish on, and I'm gonna start zigzagging back and forth through the holes that I drilled, fishing each of them for probably a minute. If I don't mark anything on the flasher, I'm moving. Go to the next hole, if you don't get anything, you know, don't mark anything, in the first three holes that are pretty close to each other, I'm gonna skip a few, go a little bit farther away. You wanna make smaller moves on areas you have fish in. If you're not marking anything, make a bigger move. The biggest thing about these yellow bass and a lot of other fish is they're always moving. If you don't have anything in one area, move to a different area. Start over, drill holes, fish them hard, Hopefully pile up some fish. Um, probably not going to be out here too much longer. Might check a couple other spots. I might not. Um, I'll put it on here if I do, whether we do or don't. Um, otherwise, thank you everybody for watching. It means a lot. Hit the like, smash the subscribe button. It helps out tremendously. Getting the word out there. There's a lot of people with a lot of questions on how to get these yellow bass to bite, how to be successful with them. What do I do? Where do I find them in the water? Where do I find them in the lake? They move so much, I'm not gonna tell you guys exactly where fish are. If I say something, I'll tell you where fish are, if you go there and there's not fish there, well, that's just like all my pins on Bud Lake here that I showed at the beginning of the video. They're there for a general reference. You know, I know I've caught fish, certain fish, lots of fish, whatever it may be, on those pins or around them. So it's just a general area to fish. Find that spot. You know, everybody has their, their secret little honey holes or where they caught certain fish. Start there. Move out from that. Put the work in, find the fish. Just screenshot my pins, try them out. Go to the pins there, work around that area. Biggest thing is, you gotta move, drill holes, let it settle down, and try not to move around as much. Especially when these fish are a little finickier like they are right now on Bud. Um, I mean, as you can see, I was catching them on big bait. You know, some kind of rip and wrap, whether it's that Salmo chubby darter, um, any bigger bait, or I don't know, Justin might have some of them coffin spoons in his bait shop. I'm assuming he probably does, probably has some rip and wraps. Uh, go in there, grab some of those. You know, they rattle a little bit. They got that little flash on the tail down by the treble hook. Most of the time, I don't even fish those with bait. Um, I, <laughs> that spike that was on there that I caught the fish with earlier, that spike was on there from last week fishing. I didn't get the hook completely cleaned off. They just get that much better if you put you know, red spikes or a little chunk of plastic or you know, whatever you want on there. So, it's probably going to wrap it up. If it doesn't, I'll have a couple extra spots we checked in the video that I'll plug in there. Uh, tight lines, everybody. Give us a subscribe, like, comment. If you have any questions, you know, we'll try and answer them all. Until the next one. Thanks.